Hello and welcome to Cycling Weekly's Tech of the Month and it's June, midsummer. Sadly, Oliver is no longer with us. I mean, he is uh, he's on a launch, I think, at the moment. Busy season, busy yeah. time for launches. We've been on a couple already this year um, and we've got a couple of products from those launches here today. And Rupert, you want to go first? I'll go first. My product, actually, yeah, it's a very recent launch. You'll have seen this on our website, hopefully. Um, it lifted a couple days ago. The big reveal. Oh, the pair of wheels. They're really light, actually. That was all for show. Uh, these are the new Zip 303 Firecrest wheels. Lovely. Uh, yeah. So that's their sort of second tier. Yes. So wheel. you've got NSW up here, then you've got Firecrest here. Uh, but the big news was these, and this is something that Zip wanted to make really clear, is that these are now getting a bit of the same technology that the NSWs had last time around. So okay, so like a trickle-down effect. Of exactly, yeah. yeah. So we see a lot of brands doing this um, as a way to kind of spice up their slightly lower-level products and make them a bit more alive. Um, and these are really nice. I've spent about three weeks riding these, actually. Um, so in particular, the technology that comes from the NSW level are, or is the uh, brake tract. So you now got the showstopper brake tract. Yeah, which is very good. Which is amazing, yeah. actually. Because um, I hadn't uh, ever had any time on that. And, you know, other carbon rims you ride, as we always say, there's a can be neither here nor there, especially in the wet braking. Definitely, yeah. But this is amazing. Braking in this is absolutely great. And so descending on these in the wet is no problem at all. Um, so this is really impressive. It looks like, if you can see, and if people have seen Showstopper before, it's kind of like little, almost like Tiny grooves. little grooves, like lasered in to the brake track. Um, and it works really well with the compound of their uh, brake block as well. Yeah, it's their just, own zip. Yeah, absolutely brake. perfect for braking whiz. I think we're all in agreement that the braking on these are really, really good. Uh, Hannah Bussey tested the latest 454 NSWs yeah. and in midwinter, sort of typical day where it's windy and wet, where you don't want to be on carbon rims. She was absolutely fine on yeah. the higher end of the scale of wheels. Yeah. So th I'm very glad to see the technology trickle down. Which is, yeah, really exciting. And they're not even that noisy either. In fact, they're not noisy at all. Uh, the only thing I've noticed is on prolonged descents, you can get a bit of like build up, like a yeah. bit of noise coming from the caliper, but other than, there's no squealing or nothing like that. Um, so it's actually really nice and silent to descend on as well. Good. What else has trickled down? You see these dimples. Lovely. That famous zip dimple technology. Now, these the dimples were on the last Firecrest wheels, I think, but these now have the uh, sawtooth design. So together, uh, Zip say that the dimples and the sawtooth design help uh, reduce drag uh, like your angles, really stable, really nice. Um, and they've got a nice and wide rim as well. So that stability is helped by that because it just helps blow the tire up to a nice wide size. Mm -hmm. um, and you can really feel it actually when you're rolling along. It just tracks really nicely, feels really true. Um, it's really nice. And of course, they are super stiff. So these just roll really, really well. So how much would they set us back and do you think they're worth it? So these cost £1,986. Yeah, so they are just under two grand, which is a lot of money to be spending on a pair of wheels. Yeah. Uh, but they are, they are really good. Their performance is superb. They're really light. They're like, I, well, I've just whacked them on our scales and they were like 1,550 grams, so 1.55 kilos. Yeah, which is about average, I think, for yeah. a 45, 50 milli deep yeah what, so nice nice carbon yeah deep. really nice carbon um probably like not the lightest we've seen but yeah pretty good i think thanks rupert nice uh set of wheels and probably something you want to stick on those wheels a set of tires mm. uh, maybe zip would want you to stay with zips but yeah maybe never mind but i've got something from pirelli and they launched these tires uh late in may last month about a week ago um and surprisingly or unsurprisingly, not surprisingly, they've gone tubeless. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. Does it? Are you no. surprised? It's kind of the way it's all going, isn't it? Well, I guess so. Um, 
Rupert, you went to the launch, the reintroduction yeah, to the, the market yeah, uh, that last great. year, uh, less than a year ago, um, I about, guess. About, about this time last year, yeah. really. Uh, and I remember you saying that they wouldn't go tubeless unless they felt the market was ready or there was a demand for it. And clearly they have seen a demand for it and they've gone into that world, taking on yeah. Schwalbe as one of the big leaders in tubeless ready setups. Uh, and that's important to say about the... Cinturito, Cinturato. 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 I'm not Italian enough, unfortunately, to probably pronounce it right. But it's any tubeless ready and not full tubeless, which surprised me a little bit. The other thing surprising about it, it isn't a high end performance based right. tyre. So like their uh, Pirelli P0 um, Velos, which are on this bike. Yeah, there's uh, a lot of Pirelli enough. actually is, in yeah. this room randomly. Um, they're not a out and out race tyre. Uh, the rest of their range, the TTs are obviously lightweight, you know, ultra low rolling resistance, you know, time trial almost. Um, you've also got the 4Ss, which is a bit more all weather. But they still, were the ones I tested yeah, actually in the winter. But still sort of, you know, almost performance yeah. based. And so in their presentation, they were very clear to state that they've extended their range now to sort of cover off other aspects of cycling, the, maybe the new cyclists or different areas of cycling that bike technology allows. So disc brakes we're talking about here, wider tread patterns, etc. cetera. Um, so this tire now only starts at 26 millimeters and right up to 35. Taking um, a leaf out of Specialized book was the 26 mil. Yeah, so going very wide um, and they say that this tyre is for all road conditions, so very hard road conditions, um, as well as some gravel riding and some off-road riding. So obviously you're not going to go mountain biking with these, um, but you will be able to take on parts of the Strada Bianchi, which I did on their launch last week. Um, and I found that the tyre is decent. We rode the 26s, we didn't ride them in tubeless ready form okay. um which is slightly annoying why I, was that Do they i that? don't know i'm not sure um i think it was set up issues with the amount of okay, yeah. um journalists they had there but they they said that they haven't set them up tubeless which i was excited to ride so set up is still a deterrent then evidently evidently um but they did say some really interesting things about tubeless um in general and how that um these should work on any rim any sort of tire and rim combination. They're happy with that. There's no specific brand that they're working with. Um, but they're also saying that, you know, tubeless in general needs to be addressed as a standard and there needs to be a standard and everyone needs to come together to sort of decide that. Um, and I think they're in workings with the board of tubeless ready people. I can't remember the name. The, 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 the great the greater board. yeah, yeah like the, we don't see those people they're like the gods of <laughs> pulling the rooms. strings behind yeah. the scenes yeah um, but they they were saying that safety is paramount and that's what they've come up with with these it's all about safety and making sure the tires work um, and work with all the rims these retail i think 26s and 28s are 45 46 pounds okay each uh, and then the 32s and the 35s i might have quoted that 32 sides wrong um, is a pound or two more expensive so 47 48 pounds uh, per tire uh, which isn't <clears throat> astronomical but it is at the higher end of it's a lot of money for a commuting tire it is a lot of money for a commuting tire but if this saves you buying yeah four tires by one just tubeless but yeah that's my maybe you want to chuck those on there mate yeah man get them on all right <laughs> mate what has happened Ollie goes and you turn into the comedian. <laughs> I know, I try. Michelle. Okay. <laughs> this is my working CC custom bike um, that I have been very excited about for about a year because I was fitted up for it um, about a year ago at um, Bello Italia by a guy called Lee Prescott, who is an expert in ergonomics. Uh, he actually has a background in fitting, um, he used to work in supermarkets. So you know where people are doing this all the time yeah. and you need to kind of make sure that they don't injure themselves. He actually was helping design those bays. Oh really? And then moved into cycling. So, so this quite literally is your bike? This is my bike. So no one else would be happy right. on this bike. If we sat on it, we are back to the Well you, you might be, you might get you on be okay. Ergonomically no, but not safe. it just wouldn't fit you like a perfect glove. So who are working? Working are based in the Dolomites. Uh, it's a guy called Andrea Seeger, 
Um, one man band, so he works with Lee. So Lee fitted me up for the bike right. at Velo Italia, and then it's built uh, in the Dolomites. So it's his made in Italy here. So it's actually made a lot like a metal bike in that they, they have the tubes um, and they, they glue them together. So it's just as strong as any other carbon bike that's, mm -hmm. that's made in a mold in a factory. Um, and then little bits of carbon kind of go in here just to make sure the joints <coughs> are, um, are just as strong or stronger than you would expect from a kind of mass produced bike. Right, so, um, so they can quite literally play with angles and lengths yeah. as they please yeah. instead of having one mold to just yeah, have so, one size. Yeah, and I mean for every, um, for every tube they've got sort of 30, they've got, they cut them obviously to the correct length so all your lengths are correct but in terms of like carbon layup you know most brands have about 30 different tubes so they can ensure that you get you know just the right layup in, in each tube so that it kind of rides and responds exactly how that rider would want to. Uh, so what's it like to ride? Um, I, I mean, it's, it's hard not to kind of be so glowing, but I do, I have loved riding it. Like it does feel, it kind of like punches when I want to. It's 6.8 kilos, um, including all finishing kit, saddle, but yeah, pedals, all that kind of stuff. Very That's heavy. decent, that is yeah. decent. Um, and you've been racing it, haven't you? I have, yeah. We did have one misdemeanor where I dropped my chain at the bottom of the last finishing climb. Come oh, wow. <laughs> after, after it was a 100K road race and I'd actually checked my shifting um, wow. sort of strategy every lap like I had a strategy I had it like nailed and then the last lap I came around a corner and I think to be honest I was so eager to make sure that I followed through with my shifting strategy that uh, I probably just shifted on a corner and screwed it right oh, up no. um, so that was heart. pretty unfortunate yeah wow. I was pretty pretty angry did you throw not really bike? over it did you throw it huh no still like a day no, the rest no I didn't <laughs> well instead what I did is I got the chain all caught up and then got over my hands or grease all over my hands uh, and then managed to get grease on my brand new kit so you know in the grand scheme of things it was a pretty chopper moment um that's a bad 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 time but yeah. it is campag super record it is super record yeah it's not eps is it it's mechanical no, mechanical and actually i like mechanical i like sort of that kind of mechanical clunk um but i'm finding yeah, it that does clunk. Campag yeah, does clunk i'm finding campag is more clunky than i remember it i had a bit of a romantic kind of idea around campag i think everyone does and uh, the romance is kind of gradually fading <laughs> um <Damn>. so <laughs> we just <laughs> lost like half of our viewership <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but you know i i really still love the shift to shape like that it just it works really well for me i, th I think campag works better for smaller hands and you know although i know that you know shimano has come on a long way i still find that campag i just like dropping really loads of gears at once when i get tired i'm just like oh, 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 all the way up the cassette <laughs> spin yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it's very satisfying isn't yeah it? mm -hmm. it's great even going the other way so like, <laughs> yeah you, you end up pushing the lever all the way up. <laughs> oh. um, how much does it cost? So... <laughs> oh, right, OK. We've got to the stickling point. Of <laughs> the full build. It's not so bad, you know, actually. The full build would be £8,700, which yeah, uh, fine. that's not so bad, right? Including Including these, fit. like, black ink wheels, black ink um, full carbon wheels, full super record. I'm really selling it here, aren't I? Um, but the frame set is uh, just over three grand, so sort of three... Well, three I mean, there half. are more expensive mass produced yeah, bikes. Yeah. So, the fact that, I mean, how much does the fitting process cost? Uh, that depends on what you get. So, at Bella Italia, rather than saying a fit is this much, you go and it's almost like a menu. Yeah. So, I would have had the, their average bike fit spend is about £300. Um, oh, and well, okay. I, I would have, you know, eaten up most of, if not more than that. Right, okay. So what, you may be looking at another grand on top of what you're paying for the full bike or uh, a bit no, less than no, that? No, 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 more like 300, you know. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, still, st it still comes out cheaper than a lot of yeah. high-end But if, if you are going bikes. to spend that amount of money on a bike, then why not, you know, an extra 300 quid? Yeah, exactly, right. To, to that portion of money isn't a huge amount. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, you're getting something that is completely unique to you. The opportunity for a paint scheme, I know that varies in price anyway, mm -hmm. what you want to get. But you kind of get in a bike that is ultimately your own that you're not going to see anywhere else mm -hmm. and should suit you and your riding down to the ground so mm -hmm. like you found actually for everything you've done so far racing or whatever mm -hmm. it's worked really well so yeah. you, you think of that price as something very pricey and it is and i'm not I'm not suggesting it is yeah, not it is a lot um, of money but you know we get bikes in every couple of weeks every couple of months that you think oh that's really nice for eight and a half grand yeah. or nine grand and then you know you think you can actually get something 
yeah. that's the same price and you get a personalized you know experience with it it's i think it's it's okay you know it's it's not it's not bad nice good yeah. well thank you michelle okay um, how, how are you fixed every month for sort of this time every, every we're doing month? this on we're doing this on uh well i'm thinking of replacing ollie really yeah, yeah go for it i think so yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Congratulations. Well, thank you. Well, well, welcome to the tech, tech of the month team. Dr. Michelle Arthur's Brennan. <laughs> he, Oliver actually isn't a doctor. That's just the title we give everyone who fills that position. Yeah. Yeah. Because you need a doctor in the team, yeah, right? Exactly. I think that finishes our tech of the month and bike of the month. But next month we are going budget and we're going to have a tech of the month budget special, which Rupert is very, very excited about. Yes. Um, so if you've got any ideas, any suggestions, please do leave them in the comment section below. But do make sure you like and subscribe our Cycling Weekly channel. Until next time, we'll see you then. Adly diddly. <laughs> <laughs> Tired, I'm just like, oh. <laughs> yeah. What first time? Oh, what? <laughs> Never thought I'd see the day. I'm gonna go get wasted tonight. Yeah? <laughs> In celebration. <laughs>